So you've probably seen this thing in the back of the shot in some of my YouTube videos. And maybe you've wondered what it is, maybe you've wondered why I have it, maybe you know exactly what it is. It's a camera. It's a 4x5 studio camera, which means it's a camera that uses 4x5 film, which goes in a little thing at the back. The image it shoots is 4 inches by 5 inches. It's a studio camera because it's too heavy to take out in the field. Uh, it, goes, it runs on these rails and it needs a decent tripod under it. And I do use this sometimes. I was at one point really, really interested in the kind of mechanics of photography. So much so that my master's thesis ended in me producing two camera obscuras. Basically, the reason that I'm thinking about these at the moment is because the Modern Maker podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts, is so good if you're into kind of design, building, making things. It's run by three guys who each individually have their own YouTube channel where they design and make furniture. You should check that out and then check them out because they're really, really good. But basically they are doing a challenge at the moment. They've put out a challenge at the moment for people to design something out of a sheet of plywood. And the camera obscuras that I made were made out of plywood. The tripod was made out of plywood, the actual camera was. The lenses were these kind of lenses. The ground glass, as it would be on a 4x5 camera, was just a sheet of regular glass that I sandblasted some texture into so you could actually see the image come up on it. I also did some sewing to create the, the hood, you know, that you see the old timey photographers uh, sticking their head under. Which is something you totally still need if you're gonna use a camera like this, a large format camera. So yeah, I produced two of these um, basically from scratch. I used some CNC machinery to, uh, to cut them out, but they were basically completely made from plywood. And it got me thinking about the camera obscura as a thing. And if you don't know what it is, the camera obscura is basically a camera that doesn't set an image. So in modern cameras, the image is set by sensor and it's an electrical thing that sets it and keeps that image. In the days of film, it was a sheet of film. The light landed on the film and an image was, was set in there. Uh, you had to develop it and, and that sort of thing. And, and obviously you go further back and it was, it was different things. It was, it was uh, wet plate collodion. Before that, there were still lenses. There were was still ground glass or there was still ways of projecting an image basically and um, renaissance painters used this they projected images onto canvases or onto walls and they traced these images and that's how they got such great perspective and so photography in a way predates what we think of as photography. It doesn't because photography kind of means the setting of an image, the writing with light onto something. But for my master's thesis, I created two images, images that weren't actually set. They were just the camera obscuras that were built specifically to live in that one place and look at one image that was a certain distance away because you couldn't change the focal length on them. Uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't change the focus on them. You could change the focal length if you switched out a lens, I guess, but you couldn't change the focus. So the image that was on there was, for my purposes, was set just by the nature of it being stuck in that one location. It's very site specific. But it's got me thinking, do you guys know, or do you guys care what the history of photography is? And so today I'm looking at the camera obscura. And um, what is it? So. So for all intents and purposes, at the moment, this, wait a sec. If I turn out the lights, you should be able to see me, albeit upside down, on the ground glass of what is effectively a camera obscura at this point. It has no film in it, it has no way of setting the image. 
other than obviously on the camera that you're watching this on, through, with. Um, so a camera obscura is as simple as that. It's a lens that takes in the light that's hitting me, that's reflecting off me, and it focuses that inversely onto a piece of glass that's been had some texture put on it because otherwise it would just go straight through it. If it was clear glass, straight through. It doesn't have to be on glass. You can project this image onto a wall. If I blocked out the light coming in from the windows and put a lens or a pinhole in the middle, then you would turn the room into a camera obscura. That's an idea. So other than these lights, the room is pitch black. There's tin foil covering the windows completely. And what I've done is I've cut a hole about this big in the foil. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna act as a pinhole. It needs to be quite big because it needs to light up this whole area. And even this big, you're still not really gonna be able to see a lot with the naked eye. You can make out movement and you can definitely make out shapes especially like lights so where the sky and so any high contrast areas where the sky meets the buildings that kind of thing any like points of light you'll see as like kind of blown out sort of bokeh are we using that word we use it we'll use that word but if you take a long exposure shot with the camera that's when it all kind of becomes clear the problem with the big opening that you cut in the tinfoil is that it makes for a blurry image, a soft image. Because you can't focus it, because it's a big pinhole, the diffusion coming through that hole, it's quite complicated actually, the diffusion will make the image soft. That's just how it is. That's why on lenses that are like 1.4 or 1.2 or, or even lower f-stop, you'll find that it's soft just a little bit and that's why lenses have like a sweet spot which might be like f8 or f11 or something like that f16 because that's where the actual size of the aperture is best for the image quality you're not going to lose quality to diffusion basically so i should probably show you what it looks like with the lights out <laughs> So, it might seem like a little bit of a pointless exercise. Boarding up the window, cutting a little hole, kind of almost being able to see what's outside. If it was a lot brighter out, you would have got, we would have seen more, but it's actually night time now, so that was sort of sunset time. It's a shame there wasn't like a beautiful sunset there, that would have been, anyway, I digress. Why bother? Well, for me, Learning what was going on inside the camera made photography somehow simpler. And maybe that's just me. Maybe the way my brain works needs to know what's going on in there before I can kind of get on with just using that. For me, something about figuring out what was going on inside the camera just 
set me free. And so that's what a camera obscura is basically. That is what predates modern photography. And I think it's quite interesting. See ya. Thank you.